double speeding. I have cut steps out, so what I will say, I am going to make a PDF version of this lot available, including slides that I had to miss out for today, um, just for expediency. So if you look and go, he's not talking about business analysis, that's because if I got started on business analysis, he would never shut me up, which is quite a problem. Anyway, before I get there, welcome to Diary of the CRM Migration. My name is Mike Hartley. Um, before I introduce myself properly, big shout out to all our sponsors. And can I just ask you all, please, you no doubt have mobile phones, a lot of you will have Twitter, please use the hashtag SS2020. We're trying to get it trending because, believe it or not, conversations have been having with people. A, this is the largest free Microsoft community event that's ever happened in the UK. Full stop, Barna. Talking to people from places like the US and that, they're saying, forget the UK, we're talking continents. The US has never seen a free Microsoft community event this large. They have pockets, but they don't get big audiences. So to have 1,100 people registered coming to Glasgow and people coming from all over the world is immense. So please do show some love to the sponsors and do show some love. Hashtag SS2020. Personal sponsor for me, my employer Enhance. They've paid for me to come, thankfully. Um, got Microsoft partner. Do stuff in Dynamics GP space. I work on the 365 Power Platform. And the majority of my job is working not the profit sector, which I love. Being able to innate, empower and enable charities to use Microsoft Stack to engage with supporters, donors, run events, and everything else. I can actually sit watching TV adverts advertising charities and instead of feeling that sort of guilt trip that they kind of want you to feel like and sit there and go if you're using the platform that we've delivered that's not why i do it i actually genuinely do love doing a job that has an impact <clears throat> me i'm my colleague as i say i work at enhance done on the streets of twice and sort of work with crm version three and up i actually developed a version 3 product that worked with wearables before Fitbit came along, saw subjects, they stole our IP, and they did, caused us to go bust. But I integrated our wearables with Dynamics CRM3. The night before we were to go live, CRM4 came out. <laughs> I'd never touched CRM4, and I made the decision me being quite young and naive all those years ago, as you can surely believe I was in the cradle at the time, obviously. I made the decision, how difficult can it be? And I spent the night converting my CRM3 work to CRM4. We still went live 9 o'clock the next morning with no issues. Zero bugs. <laughs> Rock. You can find me on Twitter, Heart365. Uh, I go by the personal brand. I hate that term, but it works of Heart of the Midlands, because my surname's Hartley, and I come from Rugby. Well, I live in Rugby, which is quite stuff bang in the Midlands, so it works. Drop me an email, details will be up later. The key person I wanted to meet, forget me, I'm not important in this. Meet Arthur. Arthur, poor Arthur. He's a CRM administrator. He works at Safe the Dodo. A charity that hasn't yet worked out that they're slightly too late. Um, he loves proper rock music, 80s references, and obscure trivia. He hates the intangible and pointless, and people who are bubbly on a Monday morning. Which is why I say I'm not touching on business analysis today, because you'll get me going. Arthur may or may not be slightly representative of me. What I'm going to present to you today... Kind of, I must say in official terms, 
any re and any uh, resemblance to persons living or dead or companies solvent or insolvent is purely coincidental and not intentional in any way, shape, or form. And even though I know this is being recorded at my request, a lot of this is based on my experience of taking CRM 2011 Dynamics 365 in the cloud, on-prem to the cloud. But I've spoken to other people who've done these things. So Arthur, yeah, he's kind of me, but he's also other CRM administrators I've spoken to over the years. So I do a blog series, which has been on a bit of hiatus for personal reasons, which is a fictional diary of him going through the project. And then a bit of technical detail about the different steps and processes. I'm not telling you this is the way you should do a migration project. That's not my goal today. I'm not telling you to do agile, waterfall, sprint, scrum, guru, jogging, whatever the next methodology is. I'm not telling you any of that. I may recommend some tools that I used based on my personal experience. But again, I'm not kind of wanting to tell you, here's how to do it. What I'm trying to do is give you an idea of the scale of what we're facing. And just some key pointers and key lessons that I learned. And things that, if I went back to day one of my project, which effectively, I pretty much project managed myself, did a lot of the BA stuff myself, I was a developer, I documented it, I wrote all the technical architecture documentation, um, did a lot of the sort of hands-on training stuff. I did have testers working with me who were great, but I had to help them write the scripts and everything else. So I kind of went through the whole life cycle. I, I lived it, um, so did my poor wife and kids, but they've forgiven me, I think. They have sent me to Scotland though, so is that <laughs> forgiving me? We'll see. Oh, hold on. <laughs> right, folks, why is this such a hot topic? Or sh why should it be a hot topic? Time is running out, and people actually don't necessarily realise it's fully. And I've just realised I've gone on eight minutes already. Right, CRM 2011. Mainstream support for it ended four years ago. Three and a half years ago. If you haven't paid for extended support, it's out of support. What people don't actually realise, CRM 2013 is already a year out of mainstream support. CRM 2011, a lot of them were installed on Windows Server. I'm going to use my shiny toy. Oh, I got this deal. We're installed on Windows Server 2008 R2. Guess what, folks? Extended support for that ended in January this year. SQL Server 2008 R2. Extended support ended July last year. If you were an early adopter of CRM 2011, those are the servers you would have installed on which means your platform is completely unsupported now. If you deal with any financial data, if you have to go through insecurity audits or ISO audits, you will fail now because your CRM platform is unsupported and un insecure. This is a big deal. Microsoft kind of made a product that was too good. They made a product of their own platform. CRM 2011 was and actually still is a really good product. I s yeah, the interface is clunky and old and outdated now, but I still love CRM 2011. I love 365 and Power Platform. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge advocate for it. 2011 really introduced us to the idea of XRM, anything relationship management. If you wanted to build it, you could build it you didn't have to resort to access databases or VB apps and hard code. You could build this wonderful web app that integrated with Outlook that you could do docs and you could have workflows and everything else. And yes, 
and it was solid. I mean, seriously, you can shout this from the rooftop. It was a Microsoft product that was rock solid. It didn't go wrong. Neither did Server 2008 R2 or SQL 2008 R2, which is why so many people have stayed on it. I know lots of places that are still on 2011 because why upgrade? And even worse, they've made their own rod for their own backs because they've always lived off the argument why upgrade when we've already paid for 2011 and it does the job for us. And now we're in a subscription licensing model. I am not going with the on prem argument, okay, folks? Hashtag on prem sucks. There are use cases, but seriously, cloud's the way. Preach it. I wouldn't have said that two years ago, believe it or not. I would have advocated on prem, but the cloud has really become the platform of choice now. But even SQL 2012 and Windows 2012, that link at the bottom, just there. If you've never been to there, it's well worth bookmarking because it will open your eyes to the life cycle of Microsoft products. Because you may not realise you're using products that are out of date and are no longer supported. You might actually one day sit there and think, I don't remember seeing an update for this for ages, but let's be honest, hands up, who in this room actually pays attention to what Windows updates gets installed? Oh, there's one man. <laughs> yeah, all right, Dave. Come on. <laughs> really, man? No, I'm lying. <laughs> right. So, for each of the segments I'm going to run through, I am going to run through. Give me a thing. Um, there's a bit of Arthur's diary, and now I'm going to give you a bit of it. I'm, last time I did this, I tried to pretend to be Arthur. And I failed. I am not an actor. Holy! I am not walking the boards anywhere at theatre ever. Let's go with that's my son's gifting, not me. Dear Diary, my name is Arthur and I'm a CRM administrator. Sounds like he's at an Alcoholics Anonymous mm. meeting and let's be honest, quite often CRM administrators have felt that when they've had to admit that's their job. <laughs> Nobody ever went to school and said, I want to be a CRM administrator when it came to careers day, or if they did, really. We finally been given the go ahead to migrate our CRM 2011 system to the wonderful Azure Blue Sky for Dynamics 365. Party time! Until realization hits, there's no easy way of getting there. See, thing is, CRM 2011, 2013, 2015, 2016, Dynamics 365. Plus the various steps in between and versions and everything else. You're talking a platform that is nine, ten years old. Let alone the underlying architecture of going on prem to cloud. So you're wanting to advocate a project. You're trying to convince the hires of the B that this is the way you want to go. Where did I start when trying to convince bosses that they need to migrate, other than the whole security angle, which kind of really should be the holy crap moment for any organization running these systems. It begins with understanding. You have to know your current system. Now, when I say that, I'm kind of talking as a bit of an end user. I have made the leap to working at a consultant, see, at Enhance. But even so, this rule applies to people working with partners or with customers. You have to understand the current system. You have to work out, do I want to do a full migration? Do I want to lift and shift everything from here to here? Because if you do, you have to consider bunny hopping. Because the only way you can do it, 
2011, 2013, 15, 16, 365. No shortcuts. Unless, of course, you know the magic secret handshake and you roll your trouser legs up and it's the right colour of purple for the moon and you know the exact right connections to find out the secret code to enter the dark layer of the Microsoft Fast Track team. Honestly, I have yet to find anybody who has managed to get in there. Uh, have you got yeah. a fast track? <laughs> yeah. Wow! Sorry. Sorry. Oh, no, I'm on, sure he's going mad, though. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, when I have spoken to people at other events, uh, other UGs, I've never found anybody that's managed to get fast track. Well, this is the one. So, to ask you well, well, what question are they making you do every version or are they taking you from the version you're on? That's actually a very good question because I've never known the answer because I've never found anybody to speak to about it. The only company that I've known to ever do how to do every single version. You still sort of do, but it's, it's done in a sort of chat about that. I'd, I'd like yeah. to actually because you're the first person I know who's managed it. Yeah. Um, the other that. option to bunny hopping is data migration. And actually, you know what? That fast track allowing is the route I would always say a company should go. Yeah, yeah. CRM 2011 is 10 years old, which means your business processes are 10 years old, which means your data, you're going to have data that is older than 10 years old in your CRM system. Legislation, I am not going to say the four letters in the correct order, but <laughs> RPEG, the four letter word that nobody dares utter. You can say any other four letter word you like at this place, just not that. Seriously, though, like, that is a big swear word. That has changed things, depending on which sector you work in. In fact, no, every sector you work in will have had government legislation changes in the last 10 years. So, data migration. I'm not going to see it, but I couldn't resist it. <laughs> there should be no golden cows that have to be taken with you. Data 10 years old, business process 10 year old, plugins, no matter how much you sweated and worked and cried bucket loads over, probably isn't relevant now. And there's probably a better way of doing it now. In fact, scratch the word probably, there will be a better way of doing it now. There's much better tools out there. Ask yourself a question. Are you up to date? That is a very tough question to answer. Who here in this room knows everything that's being released in Dynamics 365 in Wave 1? Thank you. Who here knows everything that's going to hit Dynamics 365 in the next month? None of us do. Because even Microsoft don't. You can I've been at even like one talk where Microsoft product manager has stood on stage giving a presentation and gone, right, I'm going to give you They've rolled out an update last night. I didn't know they were going to do it. Hold on while I just find out where this now lives because the interface has changed. There are updates being run. Did admin in a day course the other day with the wonderful Manuela Pil Pitcher. I always want to say Pilcher. Um, and I was running on my little surface because that's what I've got with me. Word doc Power Automate over. Suddenly discovered that all of a sudden Power Automate is responsive in its design. So when you've got a yes, no, if clause, it actually stacks yes and no instead of side by side. It wasn't doing that the other week. And I know because I was doing Power Automate on my surface and I was having to scroll left and right. And when I asked people in the room, I could get to do that before. You couldn't get it to this morning. So they, they, they are rolling it out. I, I think Manuela's instance was in 
uh, US. So it could be it's wrong out to US. But nobody in the room. Everybody looks like oh I don't know, I don't know when you logged out. So yeah, nobody can be fully up to date, but you need to know what you're talking about to be able to sell a project. And you need to know it is a new world out there. Business process flows. If you're on 20, 2011, you never had business process flows, you never calculated deals. Power Automate didn't exist. Power Apps didn't exist, which meant Canvas Apps didn't exist as a possibility. Model driven apps, although we've lived in the model driven world and that's where it sprung from, it wasn't responsive design. So, but the whole world has changed. I'm skipping the business analysis phase. I will include it in the PDF. The turtlenecks, as I like to call them. No offence to any architects here. I know some really lovely architects. Dear diary, oh the joys of spending time with the architect. Sven is your very typical architect. He wears black turtlenecks, thin rimmed glasses, looks just like Steve Jobs and drives the Saab. <laughs> I do not actually hate him for driving the Saab because they work cool. He also has the tendency of assuming that he knows all and therefore what he speaks must come into being. I have dealt with some dreadful architects, and I really have many. I, I do mean dreadful. I have dealt with some really fantastic ones as well. And I'm not bigging up M Hams here because of the foul work of them. I knew James Glover before I went to work for them. He's one of the most knowledgeable people out there, as are the other guys. And I know people out in the community who are architects who are wonderful. So when I write about architects, I write it very much tongue in cheek, but also I do kind of know that they like drawing pretty pictures of boxes. <laughs> But when it comes to <laughs> no, nothing wrong with the box. I might stick some people in them, and preferably ship them out somewhere. But when it comes to designing the architecture, and I'm not an architect, but as I say, I kind of have to do it. I won't go through this completely because I really don't want to take all the time. You've got the right one. Yeah. The three things that I had to consider when I approached it was structure, connectivity, and integration. I had to teach our architect it wasn't just a box of user and cloud. There was lots of other things to consider. What's becoming ever more, and honestly, I, I could have put that on its own slide. Office 365 tenant. I genuinely cannot stress how important it is to get your design for your O365 tenant right. If you screw it up, tough. You're stuck with it. Your only option, if you screw up your O365 tenant, is to go nuclear, scrap that, sign up on a new tenant, and with a whole new URL and name, and hope and pray that you get it right. My last place, they kind of got it wrong. Go on, Brett. So, just to like obviously you're saying going in nuclear mess, but what are the preventative measures like I mean, that? You've been down there for the future, so what would it So, my last place, very simple one. We were dealing with an outsource company. And one of the guys there, he signed up for an 0365 trial signed up, which then ended up by scope creep becoming the Azure Active Directory for another project that was used in the cloud. It wasn't Microsoft based, but it used Azure AD, which meant all of a sudden the charity that I was working at ended up with a Microsoft tenant name that had Paul on the end of it. They were not a corporation. When everybody saw that, 
Everybody hated it. They all wanted it to change. But it couldn't be changed. We already had an application live. We were using it for Azure AD. We were migrating our mailboxes over to it. Now, yes, we were using our own URLs and domain names, but at the back end, our SharePoint domain name ended with Corp. Our tenant name was Corp. We all knew it was Corp, and we hated it. We hated it with a passion. That's a simple thing. Actually, it's quite an easy thing to fall into. It really is. Um, consider environments, power platforms, data rates are moving at the moment. I don't understand them, so I'm not going to talk about them. I need to get my head wrapped around them. But I'm sure you can find people here. Connectivity. Consider user access, desktop, laptops, surface, tablets, mobile access, mobile phones. In the 2011 age, yeah, there was kind of sort of mobile access, but let's be honest, it was crap. And not many people really used it unless they absolutely had to. Gateways, do you need on-premise data gateways? Sync with on-prem data, because particularly if you're dealing with healthcare data or confidential data, you do have on-prem data. And a lot of places still have on-prem. Quite a lot of places still have on-prem. Product cross security, yeah, all that sort of thing. Integration. Are you integrating what to where? What are the best tools? I will tell you that my favorite integration tool, SQL Server Integration Services, Kingsway Soft. I am not being paid to say that. The reason I say that, I've used Scribe as well, and I like Scribe, but I'm hearing lots of different things about Scribe since Tipco have taken them over and whether it's got a long-term life. I don't know. <clears throat> but for the project, Kingsway Soft made available, and they still do, the CRM Migration Starter Kit, SSIS packages, take you through migrating a default CRM. I've never touched SSIS, never touched Kingsway Soft. I knew SQL Server. So I have that advantage. I wrote that whole migration in Kingsway Song. We went live with one hit migration. So when it comes to doing integration, I love SSIS and Kingsway Song. It's drag and drop, join the dots, bit of manipulation, you can schedule it, and it's built on SQL Server. So hey, that keeps your DBAs quite happy. Think of frequency and importance and value. Importance and value are quite key because, of course, you've got to think about API limits when you go to the cloud. Um, I suspect there's many people who have hit API limits in the cloud. Um, I may have done a few times. <clears throat> Jumping ahead, once you've got all your VMs stuff and your architecture stuff, Dear Diary, it takes a special kind of person to enjoy writing documentation. A really special kind of person to enjoy writing it. I'm not one of them. I just wish there wasn't so much of it. You are. We have a special person. <laughs> <laughs> we have a special person in our midst. <laughs> Seriously, a fast track and a person who loves documentation in one session. And some of you keeps their windows up together. Yeah. Oh, honestly, I think we've got a team coming together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I mean, talk about diversity. We are the embodiment of it here. <laughs> Do you remember those string art things you used to make at school? You know, nails and string, winding them around to make it look pretty. Well, imagine trying to do that for a decade's worth of data born of indecision and lazy users. Measure twice, cut once. My grandfather, on my mum's side, he was a cobbler, shoemaker. He wasn't a sh he had a shoe shop, but he was a good old school cobbler. He could make and repair shoes. My wife's dad is a farmer, proper old.
old school farm. The adage, measure twice, cut once, was drummed into me as a child. Not for long because he died when I was quite young, but even so, I then got it from my parents. But it's so important, even in this world, when you're migrating and mapping data, then you can't afford to kind of screw it up. You really can't, because once you've migrated, you really don't want to have to do any patchwork on a system that's gone live. I've come onto that. Seriously, don't go there. It's my quick advice. So, think about the structure. Solutions. How many are you going to have? How are you going to design your solution? Are you going to have one solution to store everything? Are you going to have little solutions for business function or for app or different functionality? I'm not going to tell you which way is the right way or wrong way because there isn't one. It's whatever works for where you're at. And some people will disagree with that. Some will argue one way, some will argue another. I sit on the fence so tight that the fence pole comes out of my mouth. But genuinely, it's what works. Think about entities. How are you designing your entities? You're not building them at this point, you're documenting. Think about your legacy data. What you might have put in three custom entities before, you could probably roll them into one now, maybe, if you look at lookups, all that sort of thing. Think about apps. Canvas apps are a thing. Coming from the model-driven world, it's quite scary stepping into Canvas apps. It's really funny speaking to people who only learn power apps from the Canvas side because they look at model-driven with fear and trepidation and go, I can't understand them. And I'm just like, seriously, they're easy. <laughs> but I've had discussions. I mean, me and Keith Watling, he's a Canvas app, I'm a model-driven app, and the two of us are just like, what don't you understand? They're easy. But seriously, consider, is a, is a Canvas app better than a model-driven app for that particular thing? Licensing excludes, I'm not talking licensing today, no way. Workflows, power automate, design, map, do your data mapping, entities to entities, fields to fields, consider lookups, GUIDs. I cannot stress how important it is. Make your life easy. Take your GUIDs across with you. They are the hidden identifiers behind each record. Take them with you, because that's what ties your data together. How am I doing? Hello, oh, crap. Right. And then consider your design. Do your wireframes. Design everything that's there. And much as I hate it, documentation at this point is king. Measure twice, cut once. Get it documented. Get it written. I'm really going to have to rush. Oh, dear diary. The joys of basking in the glow of my dual monitors or multi monitor setup. I would say dual, except I have. I took a photo the other day and I have five screens in front of me. And that was without one of my laptops open. I may take it to extremes. Um, and just being able to get on building something. Shocking, I know, but we've finally reached the part of the project where I can get my hands on dynamics and have some fun. This is the part that I live for. And I mean it, I genuinely love this part of the project. Managed and managed solutions. Not going there, not having that discussion at all. Whatever works. Seriously, whatever works. Some people will tell you that deploying unmanaged solutions to test and prod is the work of the devil. Others will tell you that you need to do it. One thing I will point out, in the admin in a day course, Manuela put on one of her slides a nice little nugget of information that I haven't heard and haven't seen in any documentation. There is going to be the ability to undo unmanaged solution updates coming soon. Now all of a sudden that changes the whole managed solution argument quite dramatically. 
One of the ones I'd really want to pick up on, accessibility first. I'll let you read the rest. That's the one I want to pick up on. We work in diverse work, work cultures. If you were at the keynote, you heard John Levesque talk about Samit, who's dyslexic. My son, my eldest son, is dyslexic. A lot of dyslexics work with colour filters to help them. Certain colours don't work for them. One of my old work colleagues, he was colourblind, red-green colourblind. He was a project manager. So when he was told not to put figures into his monthly project reports, but instead to do red and green, the guy couldn't do it. He couldn't tell the difference between red and green. They didn't consider that simple fact. Accessibility first. Consider screen readers. Name your variables properly. Camel case them. Because screen readers, even if there are no spaces, will read capital letters. Camel case them. Consider people who are short of sight and need to use screen readers. Consider tab stopping so that people who can't use a mouse easily can actually navigate. Consider responsive design because somebody might have visual and parent and they need their screen zoomed at 500 percent accessibility first we have the tools now to do that let's use it please yeah no limitations consider mixed type apps model and canvas yeah control yourself don't get drawn into using all fancy shiny controls you can they impact load times your users will love it when they look at it and go, oh, shiny, we want shiny. They will hate it when they come to go live and their system is slow. Use them, but control yourself. Don't get carried away. Even consider putting them in a power app, because that actually runs quicker than embedding the controls on the model driven app form sometimes. Thank you. Data migration. I'm going to skip through because I am running roughly out of time. And I want to quickly fill a data migration. Chesney Hawks, the one and only. One hit wonder. If ever there was one optimization of somebody who's made millions of one song it's him. As I've already alluded to, if you're doing a data migration, if you're doing agile, you may you, you're gonna be dealing with having two systems live at the same time. But even so, the data that you're migrating across to your Dynamics 365 implementation, you want to get that step right first time, particularly if your platform's already live. Because once users start editing that data, mopping up any mistakes, from the old system, particularly if people are still using the old system and the new system, how do you how do you write logic to fix any mistakes? You want to get your data mapping right. You want to get, and that's where the documentation step. That's why I say documentation is king. And there you go. Not just. I mean, <laughs> seriously. Be methodical about it. Seriously, get really, really boringly methodical about it. Think about data types. There are new data types out there in the world. Oh dear Lord, oh dear Lord, if anybody has ever, ever done any form of data migration to dynamics, you'll know the pain in time zones. UTC, GMT, BST, Dynamics CRM, if you have a date only field, it writes midnight as the time. Which means that if you do a data migration and you don't migrate it in the right time format, what was, say, for example, if the clock's changed beginning of April, 31st of March, 1st of April, what might have been 1st of April will suddenly appear as 31st of March. If you 
deal with financial patient data or what have you, he said, no, no, or anything. Trust me, I've been bitten by that one, and it took me a long time to work it out. Because, yeah. Think about relationships with your data. How's it all tied together? Go for it, man. But just on the time zone one, you are a common mistake to do the time zone independent or user independent. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Or tag people out. Mm. And the worst of it is that you can have one CRM system that has a mix of both. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And that's where knowing your data comes from. Do your transformations as part of your migration package. Don't try and transform your data in Dynamics or through Power Automate. Once you've got it in there, do it while you're doing your migration. Do it in your <laughs> SSIS instance. Build a staging database. Is probably the best thing I can advocate. Staging databases <coughs> save so much time in terms of pushing up the right data to the cloud. Test, test, test again. Which brings you on to testing. Oh, I do know what Arthur means when he says it's like herding cats while writing a wild bull. Getting users to actually commit time to doing testing is nigh on impossible most of the time. They have their jobs to do, they're far too busy, far too important. And They've already told you what to do, so you've gone and built it the way they told you to build it, of course, because they told you every last detail. Three, three key things here. Follow the script, darlings. I got the inspiration from my son just doing a bit to show this week. Get test scripts, user stories, make sure they're well written. Make sure your users follow them. Don't be afraid to push back. If they turn around and go, this doesn't work like we asked. When I said documentation is king earlier, your users should have had visibility of that document and approved it. So if they didn't actually approve it, don't be afraid to push back and say, hold on, this is what you told us in business analysis phase. This is how we documented it. Yeah, make changes. I'm not saying be a complete asshole about it all, but don't be afraid to push back and say, too late in the day, this is what you asked us for, this is what was signed off, this is what was built. And get the signature. One of the things that got my users motivated when I did them on migration. I told them they had to sign the test scripts. And I don't mean an email saying we've done this. I mean they had to put pen to paper, which was then scanned and sent to all the executive sponsors for the project as proof that they had done the testing and signed it off as working. All of a sudden, they became very motivated to do testing. Because they knew that their name was going to be on that document. Push for signatures. Yeah, okay. I took it quite extreme, but that was because I knew my users. Depend on users, email might be fine. And then finally, you've done all the work. It's a lie! Oh. I did our migration at the weekend because we've got a load of data. We were doing it in one hit because we wanted to switch the old system off. I've got a whole string of SSIS jobs. I used the CRM starter kit as a basis and then built on it, removed stuff we didn't need. We didn't need cases or orders or quotes and invoices, but we had a whole load of custom stuff for legal stuff and patient health data and stuff. So take it, use it, build on it. It's a great, it's a starter. But it took all weekend to run. I, we shut down 2011 on Thursday afternoon. So I managed to get them to give me a Friday. I then did the backups. 
which were kind of pointless because I wasn't actually impacting the old system, but they insisted I had to take backups of the old system. Um, and then I ran the migration, ran through a lot of the testing and gate testing, and we had a go-no-go no go meeting on the Monday to say whether the users would start using it on the Tuesday. They did. This is an important step. It doesn't matter whether you work for a partner and you do this as your day job and you implement. Take time to celebrate. Seriously, if you just sh lifted and shifted or data migrated from 2011, 2013, 15, or 16, or any other system to 365 and you've done it and it's working, celebrate! Reward yourself! Crack open champagne. Don't like the stuff myself. Pour yourself a nice, generous glass of whiskey. That's me. <laughs> Treat yourself to a nice meal. Spoil yourself. You've done it. Celebrate your achievement. You've done a good job. And then once you've done that, <laughs> the circle of life continues. Wave one update. Monthly updates. Weekly updates. Daily updates. The whole lot. Brett's liking my Simba. I love it. Africa. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, folks, the journey doesn't stop. You move to the cloud, it's an ever moving, ever changing platform, which means you've got to be ever changing, ever moving. So, that is a very whistle stop tour. If you've got any questions, please see me after. I need to try and finish because I am two minutes over. Um, I'll try and be good. But see me afterwards. You'll see me hanging around. You can grab me. They're my personal social and what have you links. They're the corporate details. Um, so if you want to contact me professionally speaking, Please do, or person speaking, please do. See me around, speak to me, chat to me about Microsoft community, because I love community. Come and grab some stickers, folks. I have some limited edition Scottish Save the Dodo stickers. <laughs> we have Save the Dodo. I have some lovely stickers, some cards, so you can you don't have to worry about. Remembering my details, I've had, yeah, old fashioned business cards. But you know what? Sometimes they're helpful. Take away. Grab me, see me around. Final big shout out to all our sponsors and to Mark and Ian and the gang that put this on because this event is huge. It's like we couldn't do it without these guys. I thank you very much. <laughs>